So you know that annoying feeling when you want a snack and you open up the pantry and you look in there and you realize, wow, all I have are ingredients. Like if I want something to eat right now, I'm gonna have to make it. I'm trying to help you avoid that feeling because this video is all about my top 10 pantry essentials for snacks that are quick, convenient, taste great, and offer a little bit of nutrition. And we will get into the list really soon, but first I wanted to offer a little bit of clarity around what is a meal versus what is a snack. So for me, I consider a meal to be anything with three or more food groups, while a snack has only one or two food groups. And yeah, there is some nuance there because you might look down and realize like, hey, I do have three or more food groups, but it's in such a small enough amount, the volume doesn't actually equal what a meal should be for you. As I always say, you know, everyone's individual nutrition needs are very different. So this is just something to keep in mind and use as a general guideline when you're thinking about meals versus snacks. Okay, so this first one, I'm just gonna say it and get it out of the way. I will always keep some kind of chocolate or some kind of candy or something sweet in my pantry at all times. Right now I've got some mini junior mints and a bag of mini bueno bars. And I get that that might seem unusual, especially coming from a dietitian, but I think we really need to start making the case for why we should keep these foods around. The reason I keep them around is to just normalize the fact that they're there. I know that I can go to the grocery store or a convenience store or wherever else, get something sweet, get some kind of candy, something that I would normally have for dessert and make that available anytime I might want it. You might be thinking, well, if I have it around, once I start, there is no stopping. And I need you to understand that that is exactly the reason to do this. What we're essentially saying is that, hey, this thing is now off limits. And what ends up happening is when something is deemed off limits, it becomes that much more tempting. It's as if I said, don't think of the color orange. And what does your brain immediately try to do? It goes straight to that thing I just told you not to think about. The same phenomenon can sort of happen with these different foods. So by having them in our kitchen or pantry or wherever else in our house, we've kind of made them uber available. Like they're right there whenever we want them, we could go get them. And that can feel really scary and really uncomfortable at first. But over time, by having that excess and availability instead of scarcity, we start to realize like, hey, I don't have to really crave this thing. And if I do, it's right there. I can have it anytime I want. Now, making peace with all these different foods that you've historically restricted can be a long process. And honestly, that's a topic for a different video. But I just want to start out this list by saying, I really recommend thinking about, you know, if there is a food that you feel has been off limits or unavailable to you, it might be worth seeing what happens when you put it in your pantry on a regular basis and have it available for whenever you want it. All right, so let's move on to number two on the list, which for me is dried fruit. And right now I happen to have some prunes. Now I think these are one of the most underrated foods out there. I freaking love these things. Prunes have been linked to bone health. They can be great for active people and athletes. And there are some possible associations with gut health. And I know a lot of people think, okay, well, prunes are just going to make me have this immediate GI reaction. And that is not always the case. I mean, like, Yes, these do have some fiber, but we can gradually increase that if it's a concern and the benefits, in my opinion, really outweigh that potential downside, especially if you're eating these at home. And if that's not really your style, no worries. There are some really good options in my next pick, which is fresh fruit. And my first one that I keep stocked is actually kind of a crossover because I just recently learned that dates are considered a fresh fruit. I had always thought of them in that previous category because I would use them more like dried fruit, but actually dates are coming off of the tree pretty much exactly like this. So I really like having these with like a little bit of peanut butter. It's kind of that chewy, gooey texture. You can soften them into warm water to add them to smoothies, chop them up for a snack plate. Like there are just a lot of really yummy things you can do as well as of course, using them as an ingredient for recipes. Now, another option I really like having around are halos. You can almost always find a bag of these in my pantry. And again, just such a convenient option when it comes to fruit. I mean, I don't have to worry about keeping them cold or if they get knocked around in my bag, I can just grab however many I think I want for the day and bring them with me. And to be honest, this is so helpful for making sure I actually eat fruit during the day because like most Americans, I have a really hard time hitting that recommended number of servings for fruits and vegetables. So any little bit helps and all forms count. So we've covered our dried, we've covered our fresh, and then that gets us to my number four pick, which is canned. And yeah, there are a ton of varieties out there. I will usually buy whatever is on sale or like I love mangoes, love pineapple, love peaches, love these little mandarin oranges. Where'd they go? Yeah, so these, I mean, you might not think of this as canned fruit, but because it is pantry friendly, I mean, this is shelf stable and it's not going to spoil nearly as quickly as other fresh fruit options. And now that we've covered everything in sort of the sweet category, we're gonna shift gears and go a little more savory for this next one, which is beef jerky. 
Now, obviously there's Jack Links, there's a lot of different brands, but I'll honestly just buy whatever's on sale because this is one of those pantry items that can get really expensive really fast. And we've actually experimented a little bit with making our own beef jerky. So we have a food dehydrator and it's worked really well for us to just go out, find, you know, whatever cut of meat is looking good. We can season it however we want and really control the amount of sodium that goes into it. And then it doesn't last very long, to be honest, because we like it so much. We just eat most of it right away. But the packaged beef jerky is a really shelf stable option for protein. But that is obviously animal protein. And so for a lot of folks out there who are more interested in plant-based eating or plant-based protein, you're going to like my next pick, which is nuts and seeds, as well as nut butters and everything that goes along with that category. You're going to kind of see a pattern with me. I love things that are in the shell. So I've got these in-shell peanuts. I have in-shell pistachios. I have these in-shell pecans. But I also have things like shelled pistachios and walnuts and almonds of every variety, either currently in my pantry or have have been in the recent past. And especially when I'm traveling during certain times of the year, I will always keep a couple of options for these travel packs. Um, this is really important because in the past, before I knew better, I really like to take peanut butter with me to have in the hotel room or at different events. And I had to learn the hard way that actually TSA and airport security will consider peanut butter to be a gel. So if you try to come through with more than three ounces in a container, they will take it away from you. All right, for my number seven pick, this is kind of a fun one. It is popcorn. And, you know, it doesn't have to be popcorn. It could be chips. It could be pretzels. It could be crackers. It could be anything that's kind of crunchy and salty or hits like whatever your taste preferences are. But again, for me, I specifically think of all the nights that we're just like relaxing on the couch, watching TV or a movie. And having something like this to munch on can be really nice to have. Okay, this next one gets a little out of hand for me. I'm going to call it just all of the bars. This is just kind of a small sampling of what I've got in there. And again, for me, it's because when I think of a snack, I want something that is quick, that is convenient. I didn't have to prep it or make it myself, although that is also an option. And I want it to taste good. And in my opinion, all of these very much do. We kind of have like our breakfast options. Like I think these are really good with coffee or like dunked in a smoothie. We have our fruity bars in two sizes, the full size and the mini. These are actually a really new find. I tried these and just immediately fell in love with the flavor and the texture. And it's a whole lot of whole grains in there. Kind of your standard like crunchy, salty nut and chocolate mix. And I'll be honest, I'm not usually a huge fan of like meal bars or meal replacement bars, but I do think they can have a time and a place. So under certain circumstances or, you know, if other options aren't as available, like yeah, sometimes we'll have those and it does provide a lot more protein, just a lot more energy and a more dense package than some of these other snack bars. All right, my number nine pick I think might be a little bit unconventional for a snack, but I love these sipping soups. And unfortunately, my grocery store actually didn't have most of the flavors I usually buy, but I think these are so nice for something that is savory. You know, you heat it up so it's warm and kind of comforting, but again, it's not really enough to sustain like a meal would, so that's why I have them here on my snack list instead. And finally, my last pick is going to be something like English muffins or mini bagels, something that's in that kind of wrap or tortilla category, because again, these are incredibly versatile. Like, yes, you can absolutely use them in a meal, but they can be paired really, really easily with some other things to make a filling and satisfying snack that actually tastes good. And with that, we have wrapped up my top 10 list of pantry essentials for snacks that are great tasting and nourishing, quick, convenient, I mean, what more could you ask for in a snack? And this is actually a part two video. So if you wanna go back and watch part one, that's where I talk about my top 10 pantry essentials for easy meals. And you know, that might give you some inspiration for recipes or if you're doing a little bit of shopping and planning ahead for meals this week. And of course, as always, if you like this video and found it helpful, head down there to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And then while you're down there, leave me a comment and let me know. I mean, obviously I was sharing a lot of my favorites, but if there's something that you didn't see or something you think I should check out and try for myself, let me know what it is in the comment below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Kara, the dietitian behind Street Smart Nutrition, and I'll see you in another video soon.